You're watching Miami Temple Kids. treasure god knows me god hears me god is my comfort i am his and there's nothing better forgiven and chosen forever Good morning guys and happy Sabbath. Today is February 13th. Isn't it a gorgeous day outside? The sun, the clouds, the beautiful wind. It's such a perfect day to enjoy the wonders that God has made for us. Like these flowers. Aren't they gorgeous, the colors? It's time for a Sabbath School lesson review with our Miami Temple teachers. I'll see you guys in a little bit, okay? Bye. Good morning, beginners class. How are you guys? It's time for another lesson review. Last week, teacher Debbie told us about little Zacchaeus. Do you guys know what your memory verse is for this week? God is love. That's found in 1 John 4, 8. Say it with me. God is love. 1 John 4, 8. Now I'm going to show you a video about Zacchaeus. I'll see you guys in a little bit, okay? Bye. God's story, Zacchaeus. So part of God's story is about Zacchaeus, and it begins like this. Once there was a man named Zacchaeus, let's call him Zac, who lived in a town called Jericho. He was short, and he didn't have many friends. In fact, most people hated Zac. That's because he worked as a tax collector. See, back then people paid taxes, just like now. But instead of sending money to the government, there were men in every city whose job was taking tax money from people. Problem is, those men usually lied. Zach, like most, took
took a lot of extra money from a lot of people. And all those people hated him. Anyway, one day Jesus came to Zach's town and Zach wanted to see him. But so did everybody else. And remember how Zach was really short? Well, he couldn't see Jesus over everybody else's head. So guess what he did? He actually climbed up into a tree to look out over everybody. Now, imagine a grown man climbing up in a tree in the middle of a crowd. People probably thought he was crazy or weird. But Zach was willing to look weird if it meant getting closer to Jesus. From up in the tree, Zach watched as Jesus walked up. Jesus said, Zacchaeus, hurry down. Today is my day to be a guest in your home. This was kind of like a famous person inviting themselves over, except way better. This invitation would change Zach's life. Zach scrambled down the tree to take Jesus to his house. Maybe he thought Jesus didn't know about all the money he had taken or how everybody hated him. But Jesus did know, and he loved Zach anyways. Other people saw this and they were mad. They said, Jesus has gone into the house of a sinner. They wondered how Jesus could love somebody who had lied and stole their money. The great thing is, Jesus loves all of us, even after we've done things we deserve to get in trouble for, or even after we actually get in trouble. When we see that Jesus loves us anyway, it makes us want to show that kind of love to others. At least that's what happened to Zach. Right away, he wanted to make things right with the people he had hurt. He knew that just saying I'm sorry wasn't enough. So he told Jesus, I'm going to give half of what I have to the poor, and anyone I cheated, I will pay back four times the amount of money I took. Whoa. When Jesus saw that Zach was willing to accept his love and turn around and show it to others, he said, my friend, today God has rescued you. And even though Zach had been a liar and a thief who was hated by everyone, he became a friend of Jesus and a part of God's family that very day. And that's the story of Zacchaeus. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Zach was short. He was a tax collector. He stole money. People hated him. Jesus came to town. Zach couldn't see him. He climbed a tree. Jesus told him to come down. Jesus went to his house. Jesus loved Zach. Others were mad. Zach made things right. He became a part of God's family. And that's a part of God's story. Did you guys like the video? Zacchaeus wasn't doing some things that were very nice. But you know what? Jesus still loves us. And he told them to repent. God is love. 1 John 4, 8. Remember that no matter what you do, if you ask for forgiveness, God will always forgive you because he loves you so much. Now it's time for our Sabbath school poem, all right? So stand up. Ready? From the top of my head to the tips of my toes, I will be Jesus' child wherever I go. I'll see you guys next week, all right? Happy Sabbath! Hello again, kindergartners. Happy Sabbath. Well, remember last week I told you a story about Jesus telling a story? Well, this week you're going to hear more about Jesus. Because Jesus had a lot of friends. Maybe not a lot of, well, he had friends that he would stay with when he would travel from place to place. And in this story, some people Jesus really loved were having a rough time. Mary was looking at her sister Martha. And Mary was saying, Oh, I wish Jesus were here. And Martha was saying, yes, if Jesus were here, he would heal our brother because their brother Lazarus was very sick. And they said, well, maybe we should send for Jesus. And the other sister said, yes, that's a good idea. So they sent somebody to go and find Jesus wherever he was and ask him to come because Lazarus was sick. Now, Jesus loved Lazarus and he loved Mary and Martha. So they knew that when Jesus heard that Lazarus, whom he loved, was sick, he would hurry and come and save Lazarus. So they waited. And while they waited, they tried to take care of Lazarus. They put cool cloths on his head. They washed and made sure he was nice and clean, made sure he was comfortable, gave him something to drink if he was thirsty. But he just got weaker and weaker and weaker. And he died. Oh, they were so distraught. But Jesus had got the message. He was on his way to Mary and Martha's house, but he wasn't in a hurry. He spent two days 
healing the people as he was t going to Mary's house and making them better and healing the sick and making the blind see and making the lame walk. And he took two whole days. So by the time he finally got there, Mary and Martha said, Jesus, what took you so long? My brother's, our brother's dead. And Jesus said, don't worry, Mary and Martha. Your brother will rise and live again. And Martha felt comforted by these words. So there were a whole bunch of people who were there sad because Lazarus had died. So they all started walking because Jesus said, take me to where he's buried. And they all set off to walk to where Lazarus was. And they walked and walked and walked and they got to the tomb. You know what a tomb is? It's where they bury people. Now in those days, they would put you in the, like a cave and cover it up. Because when you're dead for a long time, then you start to smell really bad. And nobody wants to smell that. So now we dig holes in the ground and put people in the ground. But in those days, they would put them in like caves. Okay, so when Jesus got to the cave, he cried because he was sad that Lazarus was dead. And Lazarus was his friend. So it's okay if you cry when somebody dies. It's okay. But then he knew what was going to happen. So he prayed to his Father in heaven and he said, God, I know what's going to happen, but these people don't know. I want them to know that you sent me and I'm your son. And then he opened his eyes and he said, Roll the stone away from the grave. So, they roll the stone away from the grave. And then Jesus said in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And when they looked, there was Lazarus. But he, he couldn't really walk because they had wrapped him up in the cloths for burial. So I guess he was like this. And Jesus had to tell him, go and loose him. Take those things off him so he can walk. And when Lazarus came out, he was alive again and he was healthy and well and his sisters were so happy they hugged him and of course he hugged Jesus and we don't ex exactly know what happened like after that but we know that Lazarus came back to life because Jesus can do that now your story your memory verse says Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus now I would have had three puppets on my finger but if you want to do that you can go to miamitemple.org and your mom or dad can print out this page for you maybe a big sister or a big brother and you can make your three finger puppets of Mary Martha and Lazarus and you can put them on your fingers and you can tell the story to maybe one of your neighbors one of your friends and they can print out this heart for you too. see we're in February lots of hearts in February see we even have hearts behind me hmm. Now, I want to talk to you about death. What happens when you die? Now, I know a lot of you watch movies and shows on TV, and the shows try to tell you that dead people can come back alive, or dead people, when you die, you go to heaven, and you're watching over everybody on earth. But I want to tell you what the Bible says about death. Okay, I'm going to tell you seven things. Number one, when a person dies, he stays in the grave until Jesus comes. His body doesn't go anywhere. That's why three days later, Lazarus was still in the tomb. He didn't just go to heaven. That's not true. That's a lie. Number two, dead people never come back as ghosts to haunt you. They don't. The Bible says the dead people don't know anything. It's like a sleep without a dream. You go to sleep, the next thing you know, it's morning and you're waking up. You have no idea what happened between when you went to sleep and when you woke up. That's what death is. If Jesus is our friend, you don't have to be scared about dying. Hmm. Number four. The wicked people will not burn forever. To the wicked people, it's forever because they don't know anything else because they're all burned up. But it won't be forever, just till they're gone. It's okay to cry when someone dies. You're sad. You don't have them anymore. That's okay. That doesn't mean you don't believe in God or believe in Jesus or believe in the resurrection. It just means you're sad not to have them. And that's okay. Jesus cried. Ghosts and spirits are really Satan's angels trying to trick you. People don't come back alive. 
There are no ghosts in that old house that you see down the road. That's not true. When Jesus comes back, those of us who are living and those who are dead, Jesus will raise the dead and the living and we'll all go to heaven with him. So, it's going to be just like a sleep. So when people try to tell you that they have ghosts and their spirits and their loved ones in heaven looking over them, don't believe it. Believe what the Bible says. Okay, so, and remember your memory verse. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Okay, and that in your Bible is found in John 11, verse 5. Until next time, kindergartners, bye. Good morning, Primary Sabbath School. Happy Sabbath to all of you. I got a new mic. Well, not really, but I'm going to use it for today because we have a very special Sabbath School lesson review today. And by the way, on tomorrow, don't forget to say Happy Valentine's Day to your parents. They'll love to hear that. So we are into February, and this week's lesson, we're going to talk a little bit about music. And you know what? That's something that I really like. And those of you who know me at school, well, I teach music. And I must say, though, it's been a long time since I've played this instrument. But I wanted to play a song, at least a little bit of a song, to start today's Sabbath school. So let's see if I can still remember how to play this instrument. We'll find out together. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity, to dwell in unity. Lai la lai 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 in unity, to dwell in unity. Lai la lai 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 lai. Okay, so tell me in the comments how good was that or how bad was that? Well, no, don't, don't say how bad it was. Just tell me how good it was. So in this week's story, you might have noticed that I started and I was speaking in some language that probably most of you don't know. In fact, I really don't know it very well at all either. I know those words. Okay, that song is called Hine Matov. And you know what? It was written by the person who we are going to spend some time listening to and learning about this week. It was written by David in one of his psalms. It says, How good and pleasant it is when brothers can dwell together in unity. Well, we're going to learn all about David this week and how he took care of the sheep and he protected them from the wild animals and he used his instrument. His was a harp. Maybe today he would have a guitar. I don't know. This, this, is, this is more portable maybe than a harp. But he might have used this instrument to sing praises to God, just like we do today. So enjoy this story about King David, and I'll see you all, well, a lot of you, I'll see many of you on our Zoom call at 1 o'clock. Have a wonderful Sabbath. Today's story is called The Lion and the Bear. The memory verse is from Psalm chapter 23, verses 1 and 2. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Today's message is I can't save myself. Jesus saves me. When he had to write a report about sheep, Jamie remembered something his mother had read to him from the Bible. This is what he recalled. David looked over the flock of sheep that dotted the field. These woolly animals were his friends, and he was their shepherd. 
He walked with the sheep by the still pools of the water in the heat of the day. He led them to the green fields of grass. He was usually by himself, but David did not feel afraid or alone. He knew that God was with him. Just as David took good care of the sheep, God, his shepherd, was taking special care of him. I must stay alert, David reminded himself when he felt like napping. A little lamb might stray from the flock while I sleep. To keep himself awake, he often sat on a high rock and strummed softly on the harp he carried with him. Then, in a clear voice, he sang, The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. One day, David saw a movement out of the corner of his eye. He dropped his harp and grabbed his sling. He always carried smooth, round stones, ready for anything that might try to hurt the sheep. A lion crouched in a thicket at the edge of the water. Just as the huge lion was ready to spring on a sheep, David released the stone. Zing! The stone flew through the air and hit the lion. Then David fought the lion until he knew the lion could no longer hurt the sheep. Quickly, David laid down his sling and walked among the sheep, counting them carefully. They were all there, and none were hurt. The Lord had helped him protect the sheep. Soon David sat on his rock again, playing his harp. This time he sang, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Another day, David decided to lead the sheep into the hills. Here the sheep could graze on new grass, but danger lurked in the hills. Bears lived in dens in the hillsides and often wandered out searching for food. David carefully watched the lambs. Suddenly he saw something move in the tall grass nearby. Instantly he was alert. A huge brown beast moved in the grass near the lambs. Suddenly it rushed forward. Quickly David loaded his sling, swung it, and let it go. The stone hit the bear so hard that it fell and never got up again. Once more, God had helped David save his sheep. That evening, as David led the sheep home, he might have sung, Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Like the sheep, we need someone to watch over us. We need Jesus, the Good Shepherd. We can't save ourselves, but Jesus can. Happy Sabbath, Juniors class. I'm Kayla Bernhardt, and our memory verse today is found in Philippians 2, verse 9 to 11. It says, Therefore God also has highly exalted him, and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and of those on earth, and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Good morning and happy Sabbath to all of our juniors. This week we are studying Lesson 7, which is titled, Who is Jesus? And the PowerPoint for this lesson is, We Accept God's Grace, Acknowledging Jesus as Lord of Our Lives. Now, I have a question for you. What does it mean that Jesus is the Lord of our lives? Well, it means that we put him first in everything we do. But what does that mean? Well, think of it this way. I have this jar, okay? And this jar is gonna represent our typical day and all the activities we do during our day. I also have these ping pong balls. 
And these, these ping pong balls represent all the things that we do for God, such as Bible story time, praying to God, and showing love to others. And I also have these beans, which represent all the other things that we do during our day. So let's start filling up our jar. So when we wake up, we make up our bed, we brush our teeth, we take a shower, we eat our breakfast, we go to school, we do our homework, we watch TV, we play video games, uh, we eat our we eat our dinner, uh, we get ready for bed, and then let's take some time and spend with God. We say a prayer, we, oh, oh dear, what's happening? Oh, oh no. We spent all of our time with all these other things and we didn't make enough time for God. Okay, well, our day did not go so well. Let's try this again. Let's try this again. This time, let's see how this day goes when we put God first. So, we wake up. The first thing we do is we say a prayer to God and we do our morning devotional and we just make a commitment to love others that day. And then we do everything else in our day, such as brushing our teeth, taking a shower, going to school, eating our dinner and all of that stuff. And look, everything fits perfectly. So you see, when we put God first in our lives, everything else fits and our day goes much, much better. One of my favorite verses is Deuteronomy 6 verse 5, which says, love the Lord with all your heart, soul, and strength. I found this great video on one of the best ways to put God first in your life, and that's through prayer. So enjoy the video and think of ways that we can all put God first in our lives, and feel free to discuss it during your Sabbath School Zoom class. Enjoy the video and goodbye for now. Be blessed. God's story, prayer. So part of God's story is about prayer, and it goes like this. Prayer is what we call a conversation we have with God. That means even though God created the entire universe and has power over all things, He wants to have a relationship with us. He wants us to know Him. That's pretty amazing. We can talk to God anytime, anywhere, about anything. But let's look at four examples of different ways we can pray. One way to pray is to praise God. That's when we tell God what we love about Him. Like a guy named Jehoshaphat. He was king of God's family when some big time armies declared war on them. Jehoshaphat was terrified, so he talked to God about it. He said, God, you are the mighty ruler of all things. We don't know what to do, but we're looking to you for help. King Jehoshaphat believed God could help them. So as he went into battle, he sent people ahead of his army to praise God. They said, give thanks to the Lord. His faithful love endures forever. Yep, that means he thanked God before he won the war. And when God heard his praise, he caused those big armies to attack each other. Jehoshaphat didn't even have to fight. A second way to pray is to repent. See, we all mess up, which means we turn away from God. When we repent, we ask him to forgive us and we turn back to him. One time, another king named David made a big mistake. He took something that wasn't his. Then David tried to cover it up, which turned it into an even bigger mess. When David's good friend Nathan told him he disobeyed God, David repented. He said, have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love. Mercy is when someone gets forgiveness they don't deserve. And guess what? God will always forgive us when we repent. Of course, anyone can pray to God, not just kings. One woman named Hannah reminds us of a third way we can pray. We can ask God for something. Now, Hannah really wanted to have a baby, and she told God that. But you know what was crazy about her prayer? Even though she really wanted a baby, she said, God, if you give me a son, then I will give him back to you. Kids, isn't that unusual? To ask for something you want, then give it back? Well, a year later, Hannah had a son, and she did exactly what she promised. She gave her son back to God by sending him to live with a priest named Eli and do God's work. And Samuel just so happens to be a great example of a fourth way we can pray. Like any good conversation, we shouldn't do all the talking. We should listen 
too. That's because God is in control and we've got to yield or give in to what he wants. We yield when we listen to what God says and obey him, no matter what we want. One night, God called Samuel's name three times. When Samuel finally realized God wanted to talk to him, he said, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Samuel stopped to listen, and God told him things. When Samuel obeyed what God told him, God kept talking to him. And when we pray, when we praise, when we repent, when we ask, and when we yield, we remember that he's the one in charge and that we get to talk to him because we're loved by him. And that's some of what the Bible says about prayer. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Prayer is talking to God. Prayer is also listening to God. There are a lot of ways to pray. Jehoshaphat praised God. David repented. Hannah asked God for what she really, really wanted. Samuel listened. And they all wanted what God wanted more than what they wanted. Prayer reminds us that God is in control. He loves us and wants to be close to us. And that's a part of God's story. Hi, my name is Isabella and the memory text for this week is, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. Found in 2 Timothy 3, verses 16 through 17. Bye. Have a happy Sabbath. Hello, my early teens. This is Miss Sabine inviting you to join me this afternoon at 1 p.m. for a Zoom meeting where we can talk about the truth and the Bible. In a world where things are constantly changing and the truth is seen as something relative by some people, the Bible is the only reliable source of truth. Yes, God's word is the only reliable source of truth. So join me this afternoon, like I said, and we'll have lots of fun talking. But in the meantime, here's a video I know you will enjoy. See you soon. Hey everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of Family Moments, where we use really cool object lessons that teach the truth about what matters most. Exactly. And today, we're going to talk about this. A candle? You must be getting ready for my birthday. Well, no. I'm going to use you this. You must be making a huge cake if you're using a <laughs> candle that big. Actually, I'm going to use this candle. Dad, this means so much to me since you were out of town on my birthday last year. How can I ever repay you? <sighs> what kind of cake do you want? Chocolate with vanilla icing. Hey kids, Pastor Robbie here, along with my lovely assistant and wonderful daughter, Sadie. Hello. And today, we're going to talk about... God's Word. God's Word? Yeah, you know, the Bible. Why didn't you just say so? Well, there's a lot of different names for the Bible. There's the Word, God's Word, the Scriptures, the Truth. That's a lot of nicknames for just a book. Oh, Sadie, the Bible is so much more than just a book. It's actually a collection of 66 different books all under one cover. That would take forever to read. Who wrote all those books? Well, there were about 40 different authors. Actually, God wrote it through those people. Oh. So is it any good? Best-selling book of all time. Best-selling book of all time? You mean it's more popular than like Dr. Seuss, Harry Potter, and Charlotte's Web? Oh yeah. What about Chicka Chicka Boom Boom? <laughs> more popular than that one too. What makes this such a good book and why should I read it? Well, there are a lot of good books out there, but the Bible is actually from God, and it's alive and active. Alive and active? What yeah. does that mean? Well, since it's from God, He wants to use it to change lives. It's one of the ways He actually speaks directly to us. Oh, you mean like a letter? Well, yeah, kind of. Or maybe like a birthday card. Maybe it's got money in it! Well, no, although it's better than money. 
Oh, like a gift card. Now, Sadie, what do you think is one of the most popular things little kids are afraid of? Hmm, well, for me, I was always scared of the dark. Exactly. We live in a dark world with lots of danger lurking, and sometimes it can be hard to know which way to go. Have you ever tried walking around in the dark? Yeah, it's kind of hard and kind of scary, too. Well, today's verse tells us that the Bible is actually a solution to that problem. It comes from Psalm 119, 105, where it says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Kind of like a flashlight, huh? Right. If we read the Bible daily and listen to God, He'll not only light our path, He'll show us which way to go. But if we don't follow God's truth, we won't have any idea which way to go. And it's like we're walking around in the dark. Yikes! No thank you. Let me show you what I mean with a little object lesson I like to call, Which Way Is Up? What we're going to need is a candle, a knife, two glasses, a nail and a toothpick, a napkin, and some matches. We're going to cut the bottom off the candle so that the wick shows on both ends. And this candle is supposed to be you. And then we'll take this nail and poke a hole right through the middle of the candle and balance it between these two glasses with a toothpick. And then we'll put the napkin down to catch the wax as it drips. Now watch what happens if you have two different people telling you what to do and you don't know which one to believe. Man, it looks like I don't know which way is up. Exactly. In fact, you could say that your life is kind of spinning out of control. But if you're grounded in truth, you can stand firm and let your light shine. Cool. Let me show you another fun example where we'll need some water, a cake pan, some dish soap, and a little boat that I've cut out of a piece of paper. Looks like this. We're going to take this little paper boat and place it in this bowl of water. Without God's word in your life, you just kind of drift around and go wherever the wind blows. But if you read God's word, the Holy Spirit can speak to you and give you direction. So let's pretend that this dish soap is the Holy Spirit speaking to you through God's word. Watch what happens. Wow, that's amazing! God's word is a beautiful thing. So Sadie, what have you learned today? I learned that the Bible isn't just a good book. It's alive and active. And it's a lamp for my feet and a light to my path. Exactly. And not only that, it's like a road map for my life. Very good and very exciting. Speaking of exciting, what's this? Happy birthday, Sadie. You shouldn't have. Very nice, honey. Looks like you even put a few and chocolate chips on the, on the ice. Oh, it. Thank you, Mom. Can I open it now? Uh-huh. Gee, Dad, can we have at least waited until we sing happy birthday? We'll see you around. And that was our lesson review for this week. Now, parents, just like every week between now and the 11 a.m. service, please review the lesson with your children. Remember to visit MiamiTemple.org, the children's ministry page, if you need help on how to review the lesson with your children. Also, for the primary, juniors, and early teen class, we have a Zoom lesson at 1 p.m. If you're interested in joining one of Miami Temple's Zoom classes, email me to children at miamitemple.org. As a reminder, March 27 will be our last YouTube lesson review. We will continue with our Zoom classes and we'll include the kindergarten. So again, if you're interested in joining one of our Zoom classes, email me to children at miamitemple.org. Now we're done. Go outside and enjoy the nature that God has given us. Have a very happy Sabbath. Bye.
watching Miami Temple Kids.